down on the Gats again. This time though we've come to get a boat ride. So we are going to, I think take an hour to go from this gat down to one of the main ones. But it should be a good chance to see a good view of the city. And it's also quite peaceful, so it's a nice break from all the hustle and bustle of the city. And your boat, you've got a lot of boats behind you. Which one yeah, have you got? I think it's one of the really little ones. <laughs> big one over there? Yeah. Not that not one? the big one. And we've upgraded from the little red and black boat to a slightly bigger green boat, so it looks a bit flasher. Hopefully we don't end up on the road. So Renee, first impressions of India? Well, it feels like we've jumped in at the deep end a bit coming here to Varanasi. It's very loud, it's very colourful. very closely entwined. It's a, an incredibly holy city for the Hindus. It's the place where they um, come to be purified in the Ganges and it's where they come to be cremated because they believe that if they're cremated here then it breaks the cycle of reincarnation. So everywhere you kind of go along the Ghats, which are the stone steps along the river here, you can see um, cremation fires, you can see the piles of wood that people use. Yeah, it's a fascinating, fascinating place. So if you can see the yellow building that I'm pointing to with the with the purple face on it, that is the um, electric crematorium, but apparently they don't use it that that often. Um, right next to that is a spot where they have the burning ceremonies, and the weird thing about the cremations here is they kind of encourage you to go and see them. So yeah, as a Westerner it's kind of a, a weird concept, but um, yeah, wherever they have the cremations you will see lots and lots of people. No cameras? No cameras though. And I believe that uh, different castes have a different uh, way of dealing with their cremations? Yeah, I think where your cremation takes place on the Ghats um, is determined by what caste you are, so whether you are an untouchable or whether you are up the top, but yeah, it's one of those systems we don't fully understand. So this pile of wood is uh, used for the cremation, which is just around the corner, and this is as close as we feel comfortable filming. The nuts and bolts, the uh, transport, accommodation? Yeah, accommodation is good. We've got a hotel right in the middle of it also. It is very, very loud. There's lots of activity. There are scooters 24 7, there is honking. The cows around here seem to own the roads. I've never seen so many cows before um, in a town, and I don't know if that's typical for India or if it's Varanasi in particular, but yeah, the phrase holy shit has a whole new meaning when you come here. One thing I like about the cows here, they don't even flinch, they just stand there, oblivious to what's going on. Traffic jam here downtown in the CBD of Varanasi seems to be a regular event. Everyone's sitting down. 
So how's Varanasi been for you? Well, I've been fortunate enough to be here, uh, have been here before. I was here 28 years ago and on the surface nothing has changed. The buildings are the same, the people seem to be doing the same, the same things are happening by the river. The only difference really is that uh, everyone's got a cell phone these days. But life hasn't changed very much in this part of India, which is nice. been good actually it took us a couple of days to to find a couple of restaurants that we really like but yeah we're not going hungry well, where are we off to now uh, well it's dinner time and we've got a favorite restaurant it's up the up the steps by the river but it's a very exclusive restaurant hopefully we've got a table for us and here it is the Everest cafe and here's our view Second night that we have eaten at this place, we actually found it on TripAdvisor. It's not a very big restaurant, it probably only takes about a half a dozen people, but the food here is really good. You have to wait a little bit because they make it all fresh, um, and the guy who runs it is extremely nice, so yeah, we felt we had to come back, plus we get the awesome view. And how would you describe their staffing situation? Well basically you have one person who does everything, but it seems to work. So he's the cook and the manager and the waiter All in one. and the bottle washer and he's got a very nice smile. <laughs> well these are momo which is a North Indian Nepali dish like a dumpling and basically you're dumping stuff with different things in this case it's um, vegetables and paneer which is one of my favorites because I love anything cheesy. Mm. Uh, very tasty, very tasty. What about your SIM card? A little story there? Now, yeah, SIM card's an interesting one. Apparently, it isn't easy for tourists to buy a SIM card here. And we've been lucky the whole time we've been travelling. We have found uh, it really easy to get internet access and to buy SIM cards. But here in India, as a tourist, you can't just walk in and buy one. But luckily, the owner of our hotel, actually, he came with us and he got us a SIM card really, really easily. And so hopefully, for the next two months, we've got 1.4 gig of data a day. But we'll see how that goes. But Actually, he recycled his own personal SIM card. Yeah, he recycled his own card. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm not sure how I gave that as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a bureaucratic nightmare. You need photos and passport yeah, copies and visa and copies and, sorts of things in, and yeah. sign away your, your yeah. oldest child's life. It's uh, <laughs> much easier to get him to do it. And this is Renee negotiating how to get a new SIM card. Don't know how well it's going, but she does have a friendly interpreter, our hotel manager. And there's a few curious onlookers. What's happened? Well, it was a little bit of a lengthy process, but not too bad. But thanks to Shivam, who is the owner of the hotel, we have managed to get a SIM card. So hopefully, we are now online whenever we want to be. Last night here in the Gopal Grand Hotel, we've had a great few days. And Neil is settling up the bill yes. with Shivam, the owner, and he has been absolutely wonderful to us. He has drawn us mats, he's told us where to go to eat, where, which temples to go to, um, everything. Varanasi is one of the oldest heritage city. I really like when tourists come uh, from different parts of the world. You stayed here a couple of nights, four nights, five nights. You know, uh, we're trying to grow up the tourism of Varanasi. Thank you. And I think we should have, we have made a decision. We are coming back to Varanasi. We didn't see everything we hoped to see. We are coming back.